Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're live here at VMworld 2012. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of VMworld. We're down here in the hang space in Hall E at uh, the Moscone, so if you're out there, please stop by and see us. Uh, we got a great action going on this week. This is our third day, and um, we're hearing a lot about so-called software-defined data center. We just had Steve Herod on, and um, Really, we're seeing the expansion of the ecosystem. Um, Steve Harrod actually gave uh, VMware an A, and VMware and the ecosystem an A on um, the level of quality, if, uh, I'll call it, that, that they've delivered for servers and, and uh, or compute and memory. A B or a B plus for storage and a C, C plus for networking. Now, so a key aspect of this vision of software-defined networking or software-defined data center is the ecosystem itself, and a key part of that is services. So we're here with Ted Newman, who's a senior director at EMC Global Services, <clears throat> one of the services companies that was involved in the Cloud Ops Forum. Now the Cloud Ops Forum is the elite services companies that are going to market with VMware to really expand the ecosystem. These services companies realize that VMware is really the transformational platform, and they are there to participate in that transformation as a business opportunity. So first of all, Ted, Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. I've been looking forward to it. That CUBE alum, Ted's been on before, and, uh, and it's good to have you back. So, um, so this Cloud Ops Forum, you guys must have been pleased to be in that. Um, a lot of great names up there. You know, Accenture, Deloitte, yeah. all the blue chips, and, uh, and EMC, three important letters that, uh, that you love to see. So tell us about you know, Cloud Ops Forum and, and what your role is there. So uh, the Cloud Operations Forum is, is, a, is a pretty exciting opportunity really for uh, VMware and their partners to help customers understand what does it take to, uh, to run a cloud. And uh, what we've seen is uh, as customers are adopting and, and, and choosing these new technologies and implementing them, um, it, that's really only a part of the story. And, and to get the full value out of uh, their investments and to really deliver the agility that uh, the end users are looking for, uh, they need to transform more than just the uh, infrastructure. They really need to address uh, process, operations, uh, training, et cetera. And, and that's what the, uh, the operations forum is about, is to, to come together and, and work out some best practices that can be shared with the entire community about what does it take to, uh, to operate these new environments and, and how do you really drive up customer satisfaction and customer adoption. So what's your take, we had Steve Heron on earlier, I was saying, and uh, he talked about, it. he said virtually every customer I go see is going through a portfolio exercise. He didn't call it portfolio rationalization, I, I do. You, I think you're familiar with that term, but oh, yeah. basically they got a chunk of applications that they're not going to touch, a chunk that they want to you know, modernize, and a chunk that they want to invest in, and probably another chunk that they want to throw away and, and, and rationalize. So my question is, as they do that, and as you have this huge disruption uh, coming in the industry, big data, cloud, virtualization, Business processes are going to change. Um, and oh, yeah. that increases the complexity from your standpoint of the knowledge transfer that you're providing to customers. How are you working through all that? Or is that not really an issue that's, uh, that's on the mind? Are those organizational tensions um, something that you guys pay attention to in your consulting engagements? So I, I, I th that's a, a great um, analysis really of what we see happening and, and I think uh, the, the important thing that we're seeing is that uh, the, the concept of business processes being over here and IT processes being over here are, is really going away. And we're, we're seeing some incredible initiatives like DevOps you know, collapsing process within uh, the IT side of the house. We're seeing new technologies that allow you to really address business process and IT process uh, automation and integration in the same tool. Uh, and, and we're seeing that uh, as the rise of uh, service management uh, continues, uh, the concept of what is a service is expanded off of just the IT stack. And really, you, you need to design services the same way regardless of if it's a business service or an IT service because eventually, the goal is going to be that uh, those services are enabled by IT. And it could be provided by internal IT, a cloud provider, a virtual private cloud, um, et cetera, right? But uh, part of that application rationalization needs to continue to extend further up and uh, address you know, services and how do we begin to think more in terms of services than apps. That's really interesting, Ted. You basically, 
are familiar with, I'm sure, the notion that, okay, I've got this application and it supports this business process. And so people would go through a mapping and what you're saying is those two are becoming intrinsically linked. Um, that obviously puts changes on your knowledge base and your expertise. Sure. You're doing a lot more business oriented consulting and planning than just straight IT, is that right? It, it, it's definitely right, and, and what we're seeing is the, the CIO and his entire organization needs to think more in terms of outcomes than apps and infrastructure and that sort of thing. What's the business outcome that we're looking for here, right? Faster time to market, uh, new features and functionality in the hands of an end user. Uh, one of the, the my favorite things uh, that I saw yesterday in Steve's keynote was uh, the fact that we've stopped referring to that top level of the, the three levels that we talk about as end user compute and we're talking about it as access. Uh, that's huge, right? Because that, that's exactly what we're looking for. The, the, the users aren't even thinking in terms of compute, they're thinking in terms of devices and access and how do I get what I need? And the consumerization of IT has driven that and uh, now we're seeing the you know, the, the ITification of consumers, right? It, everybody's savvy and smart and uh, and able to use technology to their advantage. Uh, business and IT are, are, are merging, in my opinion. So I know platform as a service is a topic that uh, is near and dear to you. To you. Um, what's going on with platform as a service? What are customers telling you? Uh, what, are the ch what, what changes is it driving in the environment? Well, you know, certainly uh, platform as a service is, is really about rethinking um, you know, how you develop, package, deliver, maintain applications, and, and uh, really enable the developers and the business to, uh, to focus on outcomes. Um, and uh, you, we're seeing right now a lot of customers are intrigued and interested. Um, certainly there are some platforms out there uh, in the public realm, uh, the public cloud realm, that are getting some traction. Uh, you know, certainly VMware has Cloud Foundry, which I think is uh, just you know doing yeoman's work out there in the marketplace and, and getting people uh, inspired and understanding what it is that uh, platform as a service can do for an organization. Um, customers are trying to figure out how to do that internally as well, right? So one of the things that we're seeing is how do we enable the CIO to uh, to maintain um, control as a service broker. Uh, with access to platforms internal and external and really drive the same level of policy enforcement, security, uh, without getting in the way of that agility. So that obviously brings us to the topic of, of hybrid cloud. Uh, we've seen a lot more interest in hybrid cloud lately. Um, at the same time, it's a challenge. Uh, so many have observed that the Googles and the Amazons of the world have you know, high degrees of homogeneity, a limited number of applications, it's the exact opposite of, of IT, it's a heterogeneous of hundreds if not thousands of applications. So clearly companies like VMware are trying to drive as much homogeneity at the same time preserving open standards. So it's a balancing act. What are you seeing as far as the hybrid cloud? What's, what's working? So we're, we're seeing some pretty exciting things where customers are actually able to deploy to many clouds, right? And I think the whole multi-cloud approach is, is one that VMware has embraced and uh, and that CIOs and CFOs are certainly embracing. Yeah, the OpenStack uh, announcements, for exactly. example, this week. Yeah. Exactly, and, and the fact that you know, Cloud Foundry, you can deploy to, to multiple different clouds yeah. um, right through there. So uh, from, from that you know, point of view, we, we really believe that hybrid cloud, and, and EMC you know, is one of the first organizations to really talk about you know, the transition from private cloud as the be all and the end all to the hybrid cloud model. Um, that's my personal opinion, but you know, I think we've been out in front of that for a while. And, uh, and certainly within our consulting organization and, and the work we're doing with our customers is about how do you enable uh, an organization to take advantage of those services that are compelling to them, regardless of who that service provider is, without um, forfeiting security and compliance. Well, you know, Ted, it's interesting to say EMC was one of the, the first, I, I would agree with that. In fact, Chuck Hollis was one of the first guys that, that blogged about it. He wasn't, he'll tell you, he wasn't the first, uh, but, but he was one of the first. And he laid out what, at the time, he called private cloud, which, which is what people today think of as hybrid cloud. So right. private. So, and then what happened is the industry just morphed the term into private cloud, meaning internal cloud. And then the, the whole IT world said, "That's just IT." And then we, remember, we had that you know two years of what really is it? Um, but essentially, that original definition was being able to control and govern, you know, your data, your security, and have that you know common platform. Um, so you're saying that you're, you have real examples of customers that are actually doing that 
today. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Either, you know, don't name the customers if you can't, but just sure. give us the examples and the use cases. So, um, you know, what we're seeing, and, and we have a, a customer that we worked with uh, here in the Bay Area, where uh, they, they, took a, they went about it in a two-pronged approach, right? One was um, consuming publicly available uh, cloud uh, services in order to be able to rapidly build uh, some new capability and, and do it in a very agile way for, for one of their business units. And then the other was um, deploying some new features and functionality targeted at, uh, at their, uh, at their um, partner organization so that uh, their partners would be able to, to consume and offer some new services. And they did that as a, as a public cloud, right? So we're seeing many organizations um, latch onto this concept of a hybrid cloud, not just consuming internal and external cloud resources in a private way. In my personal opinion, right, private cloud does ex extend outside of the outside of the data center. I liked the definition, actually. Yeah. It, I thought it had a lot of meat to it. But. And, and, well, and that's what we need to deliver, yeah. right? Regardless of what we call it, yeah, yeah, right. you know, we, that's what we need to deliver. Um, but many customers are, are really taking advantage of the fact that they can not only consume services, but also offer services both internal and external and that uh, opens up new lines of revenue, you know, all kinds of new agility, et cetera. Well, and there's some, just some clear examples of that. Uh, we had uh, NYSE on, um, Bergal O'Sullivan. I love that example. There's a couple others, too, that we've covered at Wikibon. Uh, Cerner is another one. They've got the Cerner cl uh, Cloud, Healthcare Cloud, and, and USC has an archive cloud. NYSE is very interesting. They essentially did you know, sort of Amazon for the capital markets uh, exactly. with, with a better SLA. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And actually, Fergal said you guys were involved in helping them think that through. I don't know if you're familiar with that situation. Oh, yeah. It's a great example of uh, an organization turning IT, which is always thought of as a cost center, into a profit center. Exactly, and, and I, I believe that uh, they had uh, Nancy Turbay uh, from our organization uh, up with them on, on Monday, I think, uh, talking about that. And I believe she's also presenting tomorrow on uh, some of the successes that we had with them. But uh, you know, they came to us a, a, at least 18 months ago to say they, we have this idea, right? And and NYSE is, is certainly a, a place that has recognized that all of their business agility, 100% depends on IT agility, right? Uh, there is nothing that they do that is not dependent on IT. And then they realize that they have developed over the course of the last 30 years some incredible technology, some incredible processes, and to make that available to their partners and customers would add a lot of value, right, and, and open up some new revenue streams. We're seeing that not just in financial services, but also in pharma and healthcare, and you know, we've, we've seen that in a number of different uh, markets where you can really have an impact on the business's bottom line not just by reducing costs, but by adding new lines of revenue. Yeah, so now, so those are examples, the three I gave, USC, Cerner, and, and NYSE, are examples of uh, companies actually becoming cloud service providers. I'm inferring from your comments that even if a, an organization doesn't become a cloud service provider, here, swipe the credit card, and that's not what NYSE's uh, uh, right. model is, but you know, metaphorically, swipe the credit card, here's some services. You're saying that organizations are offering different types of services, maybe not direct cloud services, that are being enabled by that uh, hybrid cloud or what we call the private cloud right. capability, right. that business capability. Exactly. So exactly. not just a direct cloud service product. Can you give me an example? I mean, that's Sure, there, there was a, um, a, a healthcare organization that had a lot of expertise uh, around um, you know, being able to, uh, to take a look at uh, radiology exams mm -hmm. and provide uh, you know, some remote um, V expert type service that's been enabled uh, via cloud technologies, right? Uh, there's also an, another uh, a doctor's organization uh, in the West, right, where uh, they uh, synced up a number of uh, long-term healthcare uh, 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 facilities and have uh, you know virtual doctor's visits, right? Where they use uh, some of the Cisco telepresence technology to have a doctor in the room with the patient, even though they're you know three or four states away, um, and you know that is a one. It increases you know customer uh, intimacy. Uh, it addresses some needs and allows them to extend their reach, right? And it, you know it's built on top of a lot of these cloud services, and it's it's. Very exciting. And it expands yeah. their market by allowing them to offer new products and services. So that's an example where they're not selling IT as a service, they're selling a service that's enabled by IT. Exactly. And it's a perfect example of tying back to our earlier conversation of how the business 
process and the IT processes are just slammed together. Right. Uh, interesting. Now you mentioned DevOps before, Ted. Um, that's something that we've covered here on Silicon Angle pretty extensively, and it's essentially it's the intersection of application development and, and operations and that cross-training of those disciplines, um, and really getting rid of some of the back and forth <coughs> and speeding up time to delivery, time to deployment. What are you seeing there in DevOps? Well, uh, we're seeing a couple of things, right? One uh, notable thing, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, is that DevOps is quickly becoming uh, the, the new cloud, right, in terms of uh, a term that everybody's using and not necessarily everybody understands, <laughs> right? So there's, uh, there's not necessarily a definitive uh, body of knowledge out there about uh, DevOps yet, unfortunately, and, and certainly we're trying to, uh, to help with that. Um, but we are definitely seeing many customers uh, adopting the spirit and some of the, uh, the, the tenets of DevOps as a way to, uh, to bring their, uh, their IT organization together, right? Nobody wants silos anymore. Uh, cloud has been great about breaking down the silos from an infrastructure perspective. Uh, DevOps is doing the same thing from the uh, you know, higher up the stack, right? The, uh, the application development, the operations, the maintenance, et cetera. And, and um, it's, a, it's a powerful tool by any name, right? You know, I think it is a, a, a key tenet of overall IT transformation. Yeah, we had a, uh, on Wikibon, we had a great peer insight with uh, Munder Capital. Uh, go, go to Wikibon and check out, uh, if you just uh, search on Munder Capital, there was a, a peer insight that we did that was really effective, achieving hyper-productivity through DevOps, a new methodology for business technology management. This is actually a real example of DevOps, not just the buzzword, they've tr totally transformed the organization. Check that out, look into that. Uh, Ted Newman, we're out of time. Um, we, we could go on forever. I mean, every time I talk to somebody from EMC Consulting, it's like this treasure trove of, of knowledge and information. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, very interesting business, kind of the tip of the spear, I call it, uh, for a lot of great activities that are going on. So uh, enjoy the rest of uh, VMworld. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insights and perspectives with our audience. Oh, thanks very much for the opportunity. Great to see you Appreciate again. All right, it. keep it right there. We'll be right back uh, with our next guest uh, from uh, AppFrog. Uh, James Waters is coming on. John Furrier is going to be back. And uh, keep it right there. This is theCUBE, live from VMworld 2012.